Bigfoot sightings date back to the late 1800s and early 1900s. An ape-like creature, 6 to 9 feet tall, covered in long dark hair from head to toe. But where does this name come from? Is there any concrete evidence? What lengths have people gone to for 15 minutes of fame? All these questions will be answered in this video. This is the history of Bigfoot. Ape Canyon was an event in which gold prospectors and quote, gorilla men got into conflicts in the gorge near Mount St. Helens. One prospector, Fred Beck, claimed he hit one of the gorilla men with rifle fire. That same night, the men claimed they were under attack by the gorillas, rocks being thrown and Beck even getting knocked out. The men left in the morning and the US Forest Service came and investigated and found zero evidence pointing to the claims. Additionally, stories of large hairy bipedal creatures or mountain devils were nothing new to the area. All of this left the incident deemed fabricated. Today, the area is known for its deep Bigfoot folklore and the site has been named Ape Canyon. The name Bigfoot comes from Jerry Crew, a bulldozer operator who noticed rather large footprints sunken into the mud in the Six Rivers National Forest in 1958. When Jerry informed his co-workers, they mentioned seeing similar prints at previous job sites, including the story of an oil drum weighing 450 pounds being moved without explanation. After this, the name Bigfoot was used to describe the occasional sightings of these footprints. Crew initially thought the prints were a prank, but he eventually observed more of these footprints and contacted Andrew Ginzoli of the Humboldt Times newspaper. Ginzoli interviewed lumber employees and composed articles about the mysterious footprints, familiarizing the name Bigfoot with the tracks and the local tales of quote, large, hairy, wild men. A plaster cast was made of the footprints, and crew reached the front page of the newspaper holding said print on October 6, 1958. The story exploded, causing major media outlets like the New York Times and Los Angeles Times to contact crew. Now, Willow Creek and Humboldt County are considered by some to be the Bigfoot capital of the world. 44 years later in 2002, Ray Wallace, Jerry Crew's co-worker, passed away, and his family revealed large wooden feet hidden in his basement. Those wooden feet were stated to have been used to make the footprints discovered by Crew 44 years prior. Wallace was seemingly inspired by another hoaxer named Rant Mullins, who came clean in 1982. Toledo, Washington is also familiar with the legend due to Rant Mullins and a group of foresters leaving wooden footprints to scare off huckleberry pickers in the Gifford Pinchot Force. That same group would confess to being responsible for the Ape Canyon event in 1924. Bigfoot sightings go farther back than men in suits attacking prospectors. On the Tool River Indian Reservation, petroglyphs created by a tribe of Yokuts in an area called Painted Rock are thought by some to display a pack of Bigfoot called the Family. The local tribes people call the largest of the glyphs Hairy Man, and they are estimated to be between 500 and 1,000 years old. 16th century Spanish explorers and Mexican settlers told stories of the Los Vigilantes Oscuros, or Dark Watchers large creatures told to stock their camps at night. No matter the period or culture, there are many depictions of Bigfoot-like animals throughout history. I say Bigfoot-like because no matter the claims, there has never been severe evidence. The FBI themselves have a case file on Bigfoot. In 1976, Director Peter Bierne of the Bigfoot Information Center and Expedition in the Dalles, Oregon, sent the FBI about 15 hairs attached to a tiny piece of skin. Suspicious that the hair belongs to Bigfoot, Peter asks the FBI to examine the hair. They responded saying they usually stick to crime scenes but make exceptions in the interest of research and scientific inquiry. As suspected, the FBI confirmed the hair is of deer origin. No other claims or evidence were sent in. Four decades later, the FBI closed the case file. This was not the first time the government dealt with such stories. U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, in his book The Wilderness Hunter, writes of a story he was told by an old mountain man named Bowman in which a foul-smelling, bipedal animal raided his beaver trapping camp, stalked him, and later became hostile when it fatally shattered his companion's neck. Roosevelt notes that Bowman appeared terrified while telling the story. Although most stories depict terrifying eight-foot-tall hairy men, there is a story by Reverend Elkanah Walker in 1840. Walker was a Protestant missionary who documented tales of giants among the natives living near Spokane, Washington, said to live near the peaks and mountains and steal fish from the local fishermen. 
According to Live Science, there have been over 10,000 Bigfoot sightings in the United States, with reports from every state except Hawaii. Most sightings are mistakes or hoaxes, agreed to be fake by researchers who claim Bigfoot exists. According to data collected from the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization's Bigfoot Sightings Database in 2019, Washington has over 2,000 documented sightings, California over 1,600, Pennsylvania over 1,300, New York and Oregon over 1,000, Texas has just over 800. Although the news of Bigfoot being a legend could be a bummer to some, there are many great hoaxes from the years the story of Bigfoot has been passed around. In 1968, the frozen corpse of a supposed hair-covered hominid measuring 5 foot 11 inches was paraded around the United States as part of a traveling expedition. Many stories surfaced about its origin, such as having been killed by hunters in Minnesota or American soldiers near Da Nang during the Vietnam War. It was attributed by some to be proof of Bigfoot-like creatures. Primatologist John R. Napier studied the subject and concluded it was a hoax made of latex. Others disputed this, claiming Napier did not examine the original subject. Tom Biscardi, longtime Bigfoot enthusiast and CEO of Searching for Bigfoot Incorporated, appeared on the Coast to Coast AM Paranormal Radio Show on July 14, 2005, and said that he was 98% sure that his group will be able to capture a Bigfoot, which they had been tracking in the Happy Camp, California area. A month later, he announced on the same radio show that he had access to a captured Bigfoot and it was arranging a pay for few event for people to see. He appeared on Coast to Coast AM again a few days later to announce no captive Bigfoot. He blamed an unnamed woman for misleading him and said the show's audience was gullible. On July 9th, 2008, Rick Dyer and Matthew Winton published a video on YouTube declaring that they had discovered the body of a dead Bigfoot in a forest in northern Georgia called Rick Matt. Tom Biscardi was contacted to investigate. Dyer and Winton obtained 50 grand from Searching for Bigfoot Incorporated. The story was covered by many major news networks, including BBC, CNN, ABC News, and Fox News. Soon after a press conference, the alleged Bigfoot body was delivered in a block of ice in a freezer by the Searching for Bigfoot team. When the contents were thawed, observers found that the hair was unnatural, the head was hollow, and the feet were rubber. Dyer and Witten admitted that it was a hoax after being confronted by Steve Coles, executive director of SquatchDetective.com. Four years later, in August 2012, a man in Montana was killed by a car while perpetrating a Bigfoot hoax using a ghillie suit. Randy Tenley was trying to trigger a Bigfoot sighting, running onto the street in a ghillie suit and getting hit by two passing cars. He was 44 years old and passed away after the incident. Two years after that, in January 2014, Rick Dyer returned for another hoax, saying that he had killed a Bigfoot in September 2012 outside San Antonio, Texas. He claimed to have had scientific tests conducted on the body, quote, from DNA tests to 3D optical scans to body scans. It is the real deal. It's Bigfoot and Bigfoot's here, and I shot it, and now I'm proving it to the world, end quote. He said that he had kept the body in a hidden location, and he planned to take it on tour across North America in 2014. He released images of the body and a video showing a few individuals' reactions to seeing it, but never released any of the test or scans. He refused to disclose the test results or to provide biological samples. He said that the DNA results were done by an undisclosed lab and could not be matched to identify any known animal. Dyer said that he would reveal the body and test on February 9, 2014 at a news conference at Washington University, but he never made the test results available. After the tour, the Bigfoot body was taken to Houston, Texas on March 28, 2014. Dyer made it on his Facebook page that his Bigfoot corpse was another hoax. He had paid Chris Russell a twisted toy box to manufacture the prop from latex, foam, and camel hair, which he nicknamed Hank. Dyer earned approximately 60 grand from the tour of his second fake Bigfoot corpse. He stated that he did kill a Bigfoot, but did not take the actual body on tour for fear that it would be stolen. In April 2022, a man in Mobile, Alabama posted photos he claimed were of Bigfoot to his Facebook page, indicating the Mobile County Sheriff's Office validated his claim, and the team from Finding Bigfoot was being dispatched. The photos circulated on social media, attracting the attention of NBC. The man admitted the images were an April Fool's Day hoax. On July 7th of the same year, Coyote Peterson, owner of Brave Wilderness, released a post on Facebook where he claimed to have discovered a large primate skull in British Columbia, indicating that he had unearthed and smuggled the skull into the United States for primatologist review. 
He claimed to have initially hidden the discovery due to concerns that government agencies may interfere. The post went viral, quickly gaining the attention of numerous scientists who dismissed the skull as a replica of a gorilla skull. Darren Nash, a vertebrae paleontologist, stated, I'm told that Coyote Peterson does this sort of thing fairly often as clickbait, and that this is a stunt done to promote an upcoming video. Maybe this is meant to be taken as harmless fun, but in an age where anti-scientific feelings and conspiracy culture are a serious problem, it, again, really isn't a good look. I think this stunt has backfired. To sum it up, Bigfoot is one of the best, if not the most famous legends to grace the United States. On par with UFOs and the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot will live on by the campfire for years and years, ready to strike at a moment's notice.